Uh, anybody in the classroom as yet? Because the camera is not working for the classroom. I can't see anyone. Good morning, Aditya. You can hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, any doubts since yesterday? Hmm? Anybody who has any doubts? No? Rahul Pahi, no doubts? No. Uh. Okay. Uh, I think it would be good to keep have your camera on so we can see you clearly. Right? Okay, I'll share the worksheets seven and eight related to sentence completion today because I haven't received the formatted worksheet as yet. So as soon as I receive them, I'll share. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so classroom eight, is anybody there in classroom eight as of now? So are you, um, Rahul, are you clear with the uh, gap filling sentence completion work uh, questions? Um, not always, like hmm. majority of the time it's easy, but uh, sometimes hmm. the words can be like more similar. Yeah, the words can be similar, but time. usually you'll have uh, three, uh, three gaps, three uh, blanks to fill in. It will take time and it will take a little more of analytical thinking. So you'll get a little practice. And okay, the all the um, exercises in the volume that you have, the study material that you have received, uh, those you will complete. Yeah, those will be your practice because others who had attended the classes earlier through the year, they have done it. So I didn't repeat all of them in class. So um, Agrima, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. So Agrima, any doubts uh, in uh, the sentence completion work, uh, questions so far? No, ma'am. No? Okay, so for you also, you will complete all the sentence completion questions, the exercises that are there in your study material. Yeah, so session 11, 12, all exercises you will complete. That will be your extra practice. Okay. okay. So those we had, we have already done earlier in class, um, that is in the regular batch. So I, it would have been a repetition for all those who have already done. So for you, that will be your extra practice, which you will do on your own. Right? Okay, so I think most of you are there. We can get started. Good morning, Sneha. Good morning, 
Good morning. Okay, today uh, we will be doing, a, we'll be going a little further with the gap filling and we'll be doing some closed passages. That is, closed passages are the bigger passages. Like, so uh, till uh, now we did about two to three sentences, about two or three um, blanks we had. Uh, now, now we are going to do the bigger passages. You must have done these in the 10th, 9th, 10th, I think you had closed passages in your syllabus. Do you remember? No? Okay, doesn't matter. So let's get started with this. Just a minute. Let me know if you can see the screen that I share. Okay, the screen is clearly visible. Give me a nod if it is. Okay, great. Okay, so this is just a continuation of the um, previous uh, session that we did. Uh, the, you, you will find the closed passages in session 12 of your uh, study material. Yeah, the volume session 12. Other, uh, you have closed passages along with uh, the four blanks or three blanks questions also. So now when we talk about closed passages, they are basically, uh, you have, uh, now so far you had about three to four sentences. So you had to read properly anyway. So it is more of a comprehend, short comprehension passage uh, with blanks in it, right? So now handling the closed passages will be more or less the same as you did in the uh, three to four, four blanks questions. And here you have to read the passage completely because otherwise you won't get any idea of what word should go in. So understand the text, the theme of the paragraph, the main idea, what it is talking about, the tone, um, how the sentences are linked together. All those things will be important. The key words, the linking words as we did yesterday, all those will be important. Then the type of words to fill in whether it is positive or negative, whether it is a noun, verb, uh, whether it relates to tenses. And of course, the tone is also important. So uh, whether it is formal or uh, informal, sarcastic, critical, whether it is just a narrative. And the different, uh, when we talk about linking the sentences, the same uh, principle will apply. You have to look at the transition words and figure out how the sentences are linked, right? So, and of course you will be eliminating. You will be, this is just a synopsis of whatever we did yesterday. So your strategy will be the same as you did in the three to four blank questions. Yeah, only you will have a bigger paragraph you'll have more blanks, about say uh, five to 10 blanks maybe. In a shorter passage, it could be five to six blanks. In a longer passage, it could be 10 blanks. But usually you will not get more than five blanks because it is then it comes to five marks. And yes, IPMAT uh, indoor Rotab don't have closed passages, right? Uh, but if you are applying for symbiosis or um, any others, they may have closed passages. And when you get the closed passages, usually you will have a passage like this. You'll have your options, right? So here we have about five options. So that's what it will look like, right? Okay. Uh, it's a cargo classroom. Me, a big one. Here, kya? No, 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 
so now uh, let's solve this passage yeah it's a big passage it will take a little time okay now this is uh, this one i have taken from your study material if you've got the uh, books then it is uh, sam example 1 um it's supposed to be page 161 yeah anyone who uh, will have a problem in following from the screen can follow from your books also so now this is a, a rather big paragraph it's got about five blanks and each now here it is not that all the blanks you have are uh, mixed up uh, with the options each blank you will get about four to five options so uh, when you get uh, four to five uh, options for one blank you can focus on one blank at a time you don't have to look at all of them and figure out okay this is correct in the first this is correct in the second or this is correct in the third right so uh, now you can uh, somebody wants to read through the passage aloud anyone wants to volunteer a uh, good morning adesh adesh you can uh, unmute the camera yeah. so can you if you uh, can you see the screen properly yes ma'am okay you can turn it around towards you if you if you have a difficult any difficulty and i uh, hope you can hear me clearly yes ma'am okay okay now okay let's read through this uh, together much has happened in the intervening years it has become harder dash to discern the true meaning of human cloning we have in some sense been softened up with the um, to the idea through movies cartoons jokes and intermittent commentary in the mass media some serious some uh, most light hearted uh, we have become dash donation and surrogate pregnancy animal biotechnology has uh, dash transgenic animals and dash science of genetic engineering easily transferable to humans even more important changes in the broader culture now so here is something important changes in the broader culture now make it dash to express a common and respectful understanding of sexuality procreation nascent life family and the meaning of motherhood fatherhood links between generations okay so now uh, what is the idea the broad idea you get about of this particular passage what is it talking about there are about two to three things that come in if you look at the keywords first is much has happened so a lot of things they are talking about which could have happened it has become harder to discern the true meaning of human cloning yeah so the first point is about human cloning now we can look at the first um, blank, options for the first blank now it has become harder dash now if you see there's a comma here and a comma here yeah your options are not easy not easier to not softer or right so if you see it has become harder we can have an opposite here what would the opposite of not uh, because the if you look at the um, sense of the sentence it has become harder dash to discern the true meaning of human cloning and all your options lead to something opposite to harder now ori will not fit in uh, only two doesn't seem to fit in right so not easy not easier not softer you have three options left what would you want to go with it should be grammatically correct also so here we are comparing we can use the comparative not easier instead of not easy 
yeah harder easier will do so b is your correct option in the first one so here we can go with b okay now we come to the second blank now the second sentence gives us examples yeah have in some sense become softened up with the to the idea through movies cartoons etc etc now we have become dash uh, donation and surrogate pregnancy so this is something about a uh, feeling or yeah we have become that so mindful of aware of careful of accustomed to or kept on kept on doesn't seem to be correct now something it should be off right now are we careful of now uh, lots of things have happened and we have in some sense been softened by and then it comes to this sentence where it talks about donation surrogate pregnancy what could go in can it be mindful of or aware of or careful of or could we say accustomed to i guess accustomed hmm accustomed to like we uh, like many things have happened all these things have been happening the media is talking about it so we can say custom to now uh, if you see aware of is also a good option but in the then we go back to the context now we can, uh, mindful of maybe not um donation and surrogate pregnancy aware of and accustomed to if you look at the context aware of doesn't really seem to fit in we are used to hearing those things that would be better right so d fits in over here so not of but accustomed to can also accustomed to donation and surrogate pregnancy then the third one is animal biotechnology has dash transgenic animals and a dash science of genetic engineering easily transferable to humans now animal biotechnology has done what hmm we have grown given yielded yielded to and flow so animal bio biotechnology now if we would use our own words we can say animal biotechnology has led to or given rise to transgenic animals yeah that could make sense hmm agreema would if that makes sense then what can we go with so yielded to yielded not yielded to but yielded now given just given doesn't make sense grown doesn't make sense flow doesn't make sense so between yielded to and yielded yielded is grammatically correct right okay now we come to four in the same sentence uh, so has yielded transgenic animals and a dash science of genetic engineering easily transferable to humans so number four um strange should we say strange don't think so marching no becoming no now we are left with new and burgeoning so between new and burgeoning now new would be just it is something new burgeoning means something that is growing quickly or developing quickly yeah so would that make better sense rahul do you think so yes ma'am so we can go with d right okay so our uh, uh, fourth blank is done now we come to the fifth blank even more important changes in the broader culture now make it dash to express a common and respectful understanding of sexuality procreation etc etc so now uh, in the context of the passage that we already did so far 
what should come in it makes uh, uh, the uh, even more important changes in the broader culture now makes make it what to express so maybe easier to express hmm? so here uh, we won't go with manageable surprising attract also doesn't fit in so it is much easier and vastly more difficult now going with the context of the passage it seems it should be easier and not difficult right so we can go with b done easy to do hmm? so here you are, it's easy because you are focusing on only one blank and you don't have to look at the other blanks okay here i don't know if the answers given are correct or not Okay, so you can take down these answers. I don't know. Um, the book it just says one B, two B. Okay, two we went with D, not C. C won't be the correct answer for two. Uh, three C is correct, four D as given is correct, and five B is correct, right? So you just uh, um, write C, D would be your answer. Number two D would be your answer, okay? Okay, now let's look at another set. Uh, this is also from your book, example two. Okay, this I won't do with you. Each one of you will try to do it. And then you will tell me what your answers are. Anyone who gets to the answers, let me know. Um, Kargar Classroom, can you please uh, see if your video is on? Adesh, can you please check if the video is on? Okay, who's got the answers? Aditya, you've got the answer? I've got the first and I'm starting the second. Okay. Yes, Adesh, have you got, got the answer? Did you solve this? I'm doing.
Yes, now I have followed. Aditya, you've got your answers. Anybody else who's got the answers? Sneha? Yes, now done. Done? Rahul done? Yes, ma'am. Agrima? All done? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma good. Everyone seems to have finished. Uh, Adesh, is somebody else in the classroom with you or you alone? No. Nobody? Okay. Okay, so let's get to the answers. Blank number one. Agrima, what's your answer? Oh, one second. Um, a D tougher. Hmm? D tougher. D tougher. Okay. Uh, every anybody else with a different answer to this? Pahi. Same. Same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I think D tougher should fit in. Uh, it's getting, uh, in, you won't say no way, it won't say manageable or stronger. So between difficult and tougher, it is getting tougher fits in grammatically. So we have D over here. Okay, blank number two, this approach, we are talking about sharpening organizational focus on customers. This approach can help a company dash itself in a number of ways. Hmm? So what's distinguish. your answer for two? Distinguish, right. So distinguish is the correct answer. Number Blank number three, a dash in emphasis from products to customers. So what goes in? Agrima, what's Shift. your answer? Shift. Number three? Option A shift. Option A shift. Everyone got option A shift, Aditya? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, now number four. As it might entail dash changes in company structure. So what's the answer? Come on, Sneha. Okay, Rahul, what's your answer to number four? Ma Fundamental. 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 Sneha, you also say fundamental? Yes, it yes. is fundamental. It's talking about structural changes, so it's fundamental. Uh, number five. It says, even industries that have relied primarily on product innovation are dash the importance of wearing the organizational process. Okay, who will give me the answer? Adesh, what's your answer to number five? D. Hmm? D. Uh, D, getting. Okay. Anybody with any other answer? No, discovering. Discovering. Okay. Rahul, what's your answer to five? Discovering. Discovering. Right. Aditya? I think it's B discovering. B discovering, right. It is discovering because it talks about companies discovering the importance of gearing the organizational processes more directly to the needs of its customers. So uh, are the other are closed passages easier than the multiple blank questions? Yeah, they seem to be easier, right? But unfortunately, those don't appear in IPMAT indoor. But yes, it becomes a little easier to do these ones. Okay, let's see what else we have. Okay, so here's another passage. So we can do this. Now here, if you see, you uh, there are about eight blanks and you've got a list of words. Now from these words, you will be just about choosing the correct word to go into the blank. You don't have multiple options, right?
Okay, you have another blank over here also, number nine. So you can just fill in the blanks, whichever ones are easier to do. So you are left with a few words which you are not sure about, and then you can decide where they could go in. Mom, there are actually nine blanks and eight options. Hmm? There are nine blanks and eight options. Just a moment. Okay, I think I missed out on the last one. There will be another one over here. I'll just write it down. Um, yeah, last one is I error. Okay, let me know if any one of you has completed. Aditya, done? Okay, Rahul? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Adish? Yes, ma'am. Completed? Yes, ma'am. Pahi, Sneha, everyone done? So we can discuss the answers.
Okay, let's see. Now this number one. It was a little difficult one, right? This is a vulgar dash, which like many others has gained dash. Vulgar what? It is not good. It was a war. So we need something. Remember the uh, your strategy remains the same. The type of word that you need. Yeah. So something that went wrong. So your I would be the answer. Error can come in over here. Right. I hope it's correct. That's what I thought of. Okay, has gained dash by being confidently repeated. Agreema, what did you get over here? Has uh, gained? In option H credit. Credit, right. So there's only one that actually fits in. Gained something, gain nothing else can be gained. Okay. Thank you. Number three, Pahi, what's your answer for number three? Pahi, are you there? Uh, dispute. Yeah, dispute. So the word this. If you see, we always have a clue to get you to the right word. Dispute between. Yeah. So here we have dispute. Uh, okay. Number four. Sneha, what's the answer to four? Mom, territory. Territory? Hmm? Yes. Yeah, because it's talking about converted dash was not claimed by any uh, in the colonies. So territory will go in. Okay, number five, it was their own dash. Agrima, what's your answer to number five? See quarrel. It was their own quarrel, right? Uh, does anyone have any doubts of these uh, about these answers so far? I hope uh, if anyone has got a different answer, you can let us know. Okay, number six. Rahul, can you give me number six? Uh, number six. Hmm? The dash. Uh, infringement. Infringement. Infringement of rights. Yes, that is the correct. It is infringement. Uh, okay, then we come to number seven. The war was therefore dash in defense of lands claimed by the crown. Hmm? War was? Who will give me the answer? Adesh, what's the answer? Hmm? D, D. D, D. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, wage. The war was waged. Uh, number eight. Aditya. And property. Property. So that's what we are left with. Yeah. Uh, quarrel has gone, waste gone, dispute, infringement, territory, all gone. So we are left with property. And the last one we don't even have to think about is commander in chief. So the commander in chief wrote the letters. Yeah. So this was also not very difficult. Yeah. Only thing is that you had to find your words from the entire list. That was the only complicated part. Otherwise, if you look at now each one of the um, op options that you have, they would fit in if you looked at the context and the clues given to you. Right. So like if I say waged, waged, uh, the war was waged. Yeah. Infringement of a right. So no other word can fit in in this gap. So this is uh, clear now. Any doubts in these type of questions you will be able to do? Yes. Okay, now what we'll do is um, I'll share a worksheet with you, maybe today, if possible, by evening uh, or tomorrow. And um, 
maybe if we have time we can we will do it in class only depends so now we have some questions some more practice on the um, gap filling questions and you will be doing them very very quickly right so less than a minute these are two blanks give me your answer Anybody with the answer? I think Rahul's got the answer. Yes, Rahul, what do you think? No, I'm still, doing, still hmm? thinking. Still thinking. Still thinking. Okay, you can start with, if you are not very sure of the first one, start with the second one. You'll get your answer. Look at the keywords, look at the context. Now, if you look at this, the story was what? Uh, the evidence was on the side of the plaintiff, right? Evidence was on the side and uh, the witness testified that his story was what? What can you eliminate? If the evidence was on his side, the story was insufficient would be eliminated. Yeah, far-fetched also would be eliminated. So something supporting his claim would be the story. So either, either accurate or correct, right? Now we go to the first blank. We are left with paucity and preponderance. What does paucity mean? Something the, which is less in quantity. Less scars. in quantity. And preponderance is the opposite of that. That is something which is greater in number. So what will you go with? Ma'am, fourth. Hmm? Preponderance. Fourth one, preponderance. So there was not lack of evidence, but there was a lot of evidence on his side. Yeah? Got it now? Let's look at this one, number two. Look at the context, look at the keywords. And option one. Hmm? Option one. Yes, option A. Option one could go in. So why do you think option one? Somebody wants to explain? Yes, oh, because by indulgent parents and she pouted. So that means hmm. protected and sheltered cannot come in the first plan. So yeah. it was either pampered or spoiled. Yeah. And she became, she cannot become calm. Calm means tranquil. So mm. tranquil is also not so solid. Solid, right. Okay, everyone got the answer? Yes. Okay, this is the next one. Again, you have two blanks.
ऑप्शन थ्री थ्री ओके एवरी वन थिंग Yeah, it is three because if you see the dash pittance that the destitute receive from the government, so something that is very little they receive cannot keep them from. So little will not be indulgent, will not be meticulous. It could be meager or small, yeah, and keep them away from what? It could be poverty because they are talking about destitutes. We won't go into crime. Yeah, three is your answer. Okay, number four. Okay, see. ऑप्शन थ्री ऑप्शन थ्री थ्री वी वर अम्यूज अ मैन हु हैड बीन सो फार बीन द मोस्ट डैश ऑफ पब्लिक स्पीकर्स को डैश द ऑडियंस एंड ब्रिंग दम टू दो इट्स एस पेडेस्ट्रियन मोस्ट पेडेस्ट्रियन ऑफ पब्लिक स्पीकर्स इट कुड बी वीक बट okay now electrified could electrify uh the um electrify the audience can go but i am a little doubtful about pedestrian hmm now you can look at option 2 option 2 could be right now if we have accomplished and could humor the audience bring them cheering to their feet could we we going to go with bore or anger right so between 2 and 3 um accomplished would be a better word uh, when we say he was now here if you see we have amused right so we'll, if we look at amused as a context humor will fit in better yet yeah, he was an accomplished speaker and he brought in humor so he could humor the audience um would be a better one not pedestrian because somebody who was so weak or pedestrian would not really work okay okay now let's look at the next one and what was the correct option the right option given is wrong right option is uh, uh, i either two or three the right option given in i didn't see the right option earlier they said it is four four will not work anyway so between two and three if you look at the context amused uh, then uh, humor can come in and if you think that he was a weak speaker and he uh, could do this then three could also come in uh, but the phrase to humor someone it doesn't mean yeah uh, humor to, someone to... is not very electrify the audience would be a better option i think three could be correct looking at electrify humor doesn't fit in gra grammatically mm hmm we could go with three you are right Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the other ones. Hmm. So let's see what the answer to this works out to be. option 3 hmm third option option 3 yeah that could be so we can say the ravages of time had left the castle untouched because it said looking much the same at must it must have so that would be untouched not destroyed defended or lonely 
So three is the only option that can go in. Okay, let's look at another one. Option A. Hmm. Option A. Okay, let's see if it's option A. Anybody else? So you look at the context. If you get the second one correct, you will get the first one. I think it's C. You think it's C? Hmm? Okay. Anybody else? Rahul, do you have an answer? I'm also got confused between A or C only. A or C, right. Okay, Adesh, what's your answer? C. You think it's C, Agrima? I think A. You think A, okay. Sneha? Mom, C. C. Pahi? A. A. Okay. We have some C, some A. So anybody wants to explain? Okay. Let's uh, do the C ones first. Anybody with C answer wants to explain? Hmm? Mom, because uh, it is like uh, laughter is a complex. So hmm. that's why... Uh, we can, you know, say it is complex and misleading. Okay. And also people interpret laughter in a way that is contra contrary with their uh, interpretation. So like we can't, you know, interpret that uh, if the person is laughing, mm -hmm. what he or she is trying to convey. Okay. But you don't uh, okay. use contrary with right? You say right. contrary to. You, so whenever you use contrary, it should be contrary to. Okay, yes. Right? Yeah. So you, if you are confused with a word, see whether it fits in grammatically or not. Right? Here we have with. If you had to, you would go with contrary. But here, contrary to would be correct. Contrary with is not correct. So we will not go with C. Got it? So even though it could be confusing, but if you look at it a little deeper, you will get your answer. Yeah. So here it will be ambiguous. It is complex and ambiguous. That is, we don't know whether uh, to be uh, to really accept or not accept whether laughter is good or bad. People interpret laughter in a way that is dashed with their interpretation of other people's intentions. So we laugh at a joke when somebody else also thinks it funny. Yeah. So one person is laughing, other people start laughing. So we can say consistent with. Of course, uh, compatible will not be an answer. Accordant will also not be an answer. So A is your answer. Here. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at this one. Number seven. Option C. Hmm. Option C. Okay.
Anybody else? What can come into the first uh, option line? A? Option A. Hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Adesh, are you there? Yes, Have you got the answer? A. A. Okay. Who else has the answer? Sneha? Agrima, what do you think? No, I think C. You think C. Okay. So we have a little confusion between A and C. Right? Now, if you look at, the, um, okay, anybody wants to explain? Agrima, would you want to explain? Sure. Uh, so it says that even before newspaper editorial shrank into vestigial artifacts hmm. or bygone error, the words vestigial and bygone clearly indicate of the past or obsolete in a way. Hmm. So their impact was, uh, so even before this happened, so you understand that, that now it's less so even before this it was less it was so less. we have to go with either self-limiting or negligible mm. uh, and then it says that editorial boards have long tended to have durable leanings which dash their persuasive power over partisan politics so it's just saying that um that uh you know it's describing how its uh, power has been so obviously we're mm. talking about it being self-limiting or negligible yeah. so the other word should also be a uh, you know ne negative it indicates is yeah it's less mm. power so that's why we'll go with undermine right so we won't go with bolster we will go with undermine very good agreement so c is the correct answer and Agrima's explanation is absolutely correct. So everyone got it. Those who were thinking of A, we will not go with formidable because that will be an opposite of self-limiting. We are think, we are looking at something that has less has less impact, right? So it shrank into vestigial artifacts. So it was anyway less. Got it. Vestigial means something which can be. Which is which is use is not yet known but can be used in the future. Uh, right? vesti uh, vestigial would be that uh, something which is not used much. Which is not used right now but can be used in the hmm. future. Can right? be used in the future, but here we are talking about the past, right? Shrank into vestigial artifact. That is, it was it was important before, but now it is not so important. Right. Okay. So vestigial organ is something which is not much in use or not so important. Like you say, uh, appendix is a vestigial organ. Right. Not in much use. Maybe it was used earlier, but we don't know. Uh, but now it is not used. So that is the sense that vestigial gets. Right. And undermine means to play down. Yeah. What does the underpin mean? Any idea? Hmm? Anyone with the meaning of underpin? Oh, underpinning is being the base structure, but I guess something supporting like something to... from below, basically. No, it means reinforcing. Uh, yeah, it is supporting, but not really from below, it is just supporting. Yeah, or say you can also say um, to reinforce a fact or to reinforce something that would be underpinned. What is subvert? 
subvert and undermine mean the same thing subvert also means undermine yeah okay now we have one with four blanks at least the words are not difficult we have to choose very carefully Is it option A? Hmm. Option A could possibly be. I think it's A. Hmm? A. A would be the answer. Anybody else with any other answer? Anybody? Else, who has finished? No, Pahi? A, a ma'am. Yes, Rahul, you think it is D? A, A. A, okay. So we have mostly coming up with A. Anybody with any other answer? No? Okay. Rahul, can you explain your answer? Why did you take A? What did you eliminate and why? Uh, the first one, ma'am. Okay. What makes it dash for a totalitarian? Hmm. So you so, won't go with uh, absurd, unpleasant, or necessary. Yeah. It could be unique, yeah. but unique or possible. Or possible. And then what else? Then second, sec in second blank, you cannot use senators. So I went with people. Hmm. Hmm. So it could be subjects or people or citizens, but we have already eliminated the others. So this is the only one left. Yeah, okay. So uh, you didn't even have to go into all the four blanks. Two blanks would have determined the right answer. Okay, let's look at this one, number nine. You have three blanks, uh, begin with the one which seems most likely the easiest to solve. Read the question and look at the blank where you can get your own word first. Option D. Hmm? Option D. B, B. B. Okay. Hmm. So what is your what is the word which will determine high tech? Um, option B. Yeah. Shape yes, ma'am. We have a landscape here, but the landscape we are not talking about a green landscape or tectonic or so it could be sustainable, but competitive is the right one because it's it talks about now sustainability would not shift dramatically. Comp you can say competitive, which could be shifted. So mentor would not be shape and guide. Okay. Adesh, please keep you the video of the classroom on. Adesh, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it on and just see. Yeah.
you can move a little to your right so I can see where you are. Thank you. Option B. Option B. Okay. Yes, ma'am, option B. Hmm. So option B. So who will explain? Anybody wants to explain? Wait, come on. Hmm? No one wants to explain. I, I want to know how you got to your answer. And, uh, after uh, that, the first, uh, the first line, hmm. uh, pain will not be because there is has to be some work. Hmm. After going to get let it know. after happening or feeling, so it's either A or B. And he aims to quit to his job, no, but he aims no. to return to his job, yes. Yeah, aims to return to his job. That will be correct. And his chances, now it could be hopes or chances, but B is your correct answer. So everyone got B as the answer or do you, anyone has a doubt? No? Let's look at number 11. D. Hmm? D? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, maybe D. You think it's D? Hmm? Rahul? Yes, ma'am, D. D. Okay. Pahi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. B. B or D? D, D. D for dog. D for dog. Okay. So, Pahi, can you explain why you took D? Ma'am, option A wouldn't go because the manners and the style. So, style hmm. would not fit in here. Hmm. Then, uh, uh, option C will also not go. Hmm. Then, option B it is a recurrent story in the literature doesn't hmm. suit so theme hmm. option theme goes in over here yes so motive story doesn't go theme goes and out of the two the manners and morals of we are already told about the wealth they are rich so we don't need to talk about that morals could be what do you mean by noble rich any idea what does that recently mean? Recently turned wealthy. Yeah, recently turned wealthy and acquired wealth by not so clear means. That's what it is. So morals would fit in in that case. Okay, we have one more here.
मैम ऑप्शन बी ऑप्शन बी ओके एनीबडी एल्स क्वेश्चन दीज आर ऑल क्वेश्चंस ऑफ 2019 एंड 2020 सो द रीसेंट इयर्स दे हैवन बीन आस्किंग सच क्वेश्चंस और नो नो आई हैव जस्ट पिक्ड अप फ्रॉम 2019 दीज आर द अवेलेबल क्वेश्चन पेपर्स द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन पेपर्स सो फ्रॉम 2019 टू 2022 आई हैव पिक्ड अप द अवेलेबल क्वेश्चंस ओके सो इवन द रीसेंट इयर्स इज देयर राइट या या so if you look at your worksheets that i have given you uh, this is a so more or less from worksheet 1 we have completed all the questions in class so you can go through them again and worksheet 2 you will be doing so if you go to them i have even put in which uh, years questions they were okay so anybody with a different answer to this no agrima you also think it b yes ma'am pahi yes sneha are you there yes ma'am what's your answer ma'am b b okay sneha can you explain why b ma'am i didn't know the meaning of the first word but i went for the second blank Okay, now what is the meaning of the first word? Motives. Like if you uh, say you, if you buy a handloom, say sari, there are some designs on them. Traditional designs; those are called motives. Certain like say peacock designs or uh, certain say leaf designs or temple designs; those will be called motives, right? so that the artist went about systematically to get traditional dash back into the mainstream and dash a textile culture is talking about textile culture for dance is to be celebrated so getting the traditional motifs back into the mainstream and dash a textile culture created a textile culture it's not evolved it could be revived uh, it wouldn't be processed so b is the only one which is correct right okay so we've done uh, we uh, so this uh, between last uh, yesterday's um, questions and today's questions uh, we have more or less completed worksheet 1 i think all the questions are done you can go through it once more to see if anything is left so uh, worksheet 2 you will do now what we we will do is do you, do you want a few minutes break anybody for a break so we can take about a couple of minutes break and then we will get back to doing some more questions so the um okay aditya had you completed all questions from the uh from the study material yes ma'am all done yes ma'am given the homework
Okay, those who are back, uh, here's this I was, I'll share it later anyway. So we can solve these closed passages. Uh, I hope you can see. Yes, ma'am. Hmm? Aditya, is it clear for you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is a passage, it, you've got, Uh, you've got uh, seven blanks, seven options given to you for each of the blanks you have four words, five words. So try solving this. Yes, ma'am, I've completed the... Done? Yes. Okay, great. We'll just wait for the others to complete. Agrima, Pahi, Sneha, Rahul, are you all there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so just solve this. Once you are done, let me know. Yes, anybody else who has finished? No, I'm also done. Done? Okay, what about the others? Sorry, my video was off. Rahul Sneha Pahi, Adesh, are you there? 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, Adesh, please make sure that your video in class is on, so I know that it, everything is working properly. Okay, so can we get to the answers now? Hmm? Rahul, are you done? Almost now. Almost, okay. Just a few seconds more, then we will complete it. We'll get to the answers. So was this difficult or easy enough? Fine. Easy enough? Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. So everyone should have been done by now. Now let's look at the answers. Number one, Pahi, what's your answer? Blank number one. Driven. Driven. Yes. Anybody else who has a different answer? Yeah. It was primarily driven. It was driven primarily by investors. You also get that uh, idea later on. Okay. Uh, blank number two. Hmm? <clears throat> Things can take a turn for the worse if the subsequent events dash to meet the expectations. <clears throat> Fail. Right? Okay. Number three. Agrima, what's your answer for three? Significant. Hmm? Oh, significant. I think that would do. Uh, significant fall from what they were a year ago. Okay, number four. Sneha. Sneha, are you there? Um, is it B? Hmm? Number four, B. Are you not sure? No, ma'am. Okay, let's see. Anybody with any other answer for number four? Failed. Hmm? D failed. D failed. Failed. Yeah. So if you uh, read the sentence, now with whatever answer you, uh, whatever word you pick up for your blank, put it back into the sentence and read it. Yeah. So if you read the sentence, yeah, growth has also been, um, yeah. Growth has also been slowing down in core sectors as consumer demand has unable has unable to pick up. Would you say has unable to? No, ma'am. No, it would be has been unable to. Yeah. Right. Yes. It would be failed to pick up. So this will not always. That's why I say always read the line with the word. Plug it back. Read it with your answer. You will always find whether you are correct or not. If you are wrong, you will find your mistake. Okay, number five. Who will give me number five? No one wants to. Better. Hmm? Better. Better. Everyone think it's better? Uh, still, investors may be hoping that things could get better in the coming years. Yes, because resistant, no. Could get improved, no. Could get good is also no. Could worsen, but not get. So this get uh, gives you the clue. Okay, number six. Trade tension between US and China is another dash that will determine. Another what? Hmm? Yes, who will give me the answer? Aditya? Oh, okay, number six. What's your answer? Yes. 
It's talking about trade tensions between US and China is another immediate dash that will determine direction of equity markets include India's as China's uh, India's as China tries to find new markets. Risk. Hmm? Hmm. Another risk. So it won't be tie, it won't be match, of, co of course. It won't be fix. It could be risk or move, right? So trade tensions between US and China is another immediate Immediate what? Immediate risk? I think risk could go. Why would you choose risk over move? Any any explanation for that? Um, it is the best of the other things. It's better than other. Hmm. Uh, so if you were to take move, it should mean that something is happening. Some particular, say, a treaty has been done, an announcement has been made, a decision has been taken. That would be a move. Your move um, doesn't really fit in actually, but if you take the idea, move could also come in. So we will go with risk at present and then we'll see. Okay, number seven, Agrima. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't unable. Uh, I, I was unable to unmute myself. Okay. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's the last option, A or B. A or B. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else with the answer? Uh, A. D. Oh, uh, one minute, Aditya. I couldn't hear you clearly. What did you say? A A. A. Products. A products. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Sneha, did you get the answer for seven? Sorry, did you get the answer for blank seven? What's your answer for seven? Yes, Sneha, can you come in? Okay, Rahul. No, I think a product. You think a. Okay, yes, let's see what, whether it's going to be a or e. Now it talks about the determine the direction of equity markets, including India's as well as, um, uh, including India's as China tries to find new markets for dash that it can't sell to Americas. So it is talking about mainly, now the whole thing is actually talking about products. Equity markets would be products. Equity markets won't be ideas really, right? So we would, I think products would make better sense in this, uh, given the various uncertainties, etc. I suppose A should be the best answer. Okay, so everyone has done this. Let's see if there's another one down there. In just a moment, I'll just scroll down. I'll just stop annotating. Okay, so here we have another passage. It has six blanks.
Okay, now here one more thing I forgot to tell you. Now this in this question, if you read the directions, it is not the same as the others. Uh, it says in the passage given below, there are six blanks, each followed by a word or phrase that is in bold. Each blank has four alternative words or phrases given in the options. You have to tell which word will best suit the respective blank, right? So you already have a word. You just have to figure out which uh, word will can you, or which word you can use instead of the given word. Let me know if anybody has completed. No, I'm done. Done? Anybody else who's done? Ma'am, I figured out three, but I couldn't uh, crack the rest. Mm, pardon? I figured out three, uh, but mm. the other three I couldn't uh, find out. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think some of them are quite ambiguous. You also have a, have the option of no change uh, if you think that the word is used correctly. Okay, anybody else with the answers? Rahul, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this thing has disappeared. 
Adesh, do you have the answers? Adesh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, have you completed? I'm just a minute. So, we'll, let's see. Okay, blank number one. What do you think is the answer, Rahul? Um, no change required. No change required. Uh, the thrust of the Law Commission's report is established on an idea that, yeah, it could be established, or do you think some other word would go in? Aditya, what do you think? Um, I think no change. No change. Founded may seem, but it wouldn't be something, we are talking about an idea, so it is more of or like uh, trust of the law commission's report. A report is established on an idea. Now, B, will give me the answer to B. Mm, pardon, I think your voice is breaking a little. Uh, option, option A, indicated. Indicated, right. So, but is indicative of a robust, so it, it points to something not intuitional in uh, united or estimated is inference of a robot no robust uh, democracy that's not okay now um, blank c pahi do you do number c yes pahi are you there mm, yes okay what's your answer to c Um, I guess no change. No change. Equal treatment to children and parents of any gender in guardianship. So we can't go with treasure wealth tracing of parents. Okay. Then number uh, blank number D. Rahul, what's your answer to D? Um, no, I think no change. No change. Uh, has been put forward for universal application, that is for everyone's application. Referral, restrictive, fragment, judgmental, is, doesn't fit in. I think no change should be correct. Okay. Um, blank E. Adesh, do you have the answer to blank E? Uh. Hmm? I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure? So what do you think? Do you have a tentative answer? Or do you think the way it is written is right? Which ones have you eliminated? So, hmm? Which ones do you think should be eliminated? Hmm? In, no. Enticed is eliminated, tempted is eliminated. Now we have created and framed, which um, seems similar to carved. Yeah. So let's go back. Uh, while calling for a wider public debate on its views, the Law Commission has carved the issue in the most reasonable way possible when it says it has dealt with laws that are discriminatory rather than providing a uniform civil code, which is neither necessary nor desirable at its stage. So it has carved the issue or uh, say framed the issue. Now we won't be uh, going with created, right? They didn't create the issue. They have presented the issue so it could be carved or framed. Aditya, what do you think? Um, I couldn't uh, figure this out. Hmm. So now we go back to the um, uh, to the context in the early, earlier sentences. So juvenile law uh, principle that the child interest, et cetera, et cetera, universal law, while calling for a wider public debate on the views the law commission has so while calling for a wider public debate on its views so the law commission has 
carved the issue in the most reasonable and possible way it has created, right? So we won't say exactly created the issue, but it has put the issue forward. Now carved and created would be more or less the same and framed also is more or less the same. But in this case, um, framed could be an answer, right? Could be, I'm not very sure about it. I'm also a little confused. Okay, we'll go to the options and see if they are correct. Okay, let's look at number, uh, the last blank, F. I'm option C. Option C. Uh, this goes, uh, okay, in a strict and narrow reading, this goes dash with the directive principles of state policy with oh, that favor uniform civil code. So it's talking about favoring uniform civil code. Also, some court judgments have questioned why such code was not yet in place, right? So why it was not yet in place? Uh, you think it is C, against? Yeah, yes, sir. Now, what is it talking about? It's talking about cheating of children. Uh, and because if you read the previous sentence mm -hmm. in the most reasonable way possible, when it says that it has dealt with laws that are discriminatory rather than providing a uniform civil code, which is necessarily not desirable. So the law commission is saying that it don't want a civil code. Hmm. A uniform civil code, right. So it is uh, against the state, the principle of state policy of uniform civil code, we can say that, right. So we've got more or less the answers, only one we are a little doubtful about. So I will give, send you the worksheet. You can go through the explanations of all the answers, okay. Okay, now uh, for those who have not been there earlier, uh, we, you, okay. And there are some more close passages and exercises in the in your study material yeah Just a second. i think i'll share this So there are uh, a few more of the close passage uh, exercises here, which you will complete. Yeah, you can see this exercise two. These you will do along with the remaining exercises in the worksheet. And uh, yeah, there are too many, quite a few exercises to do actually. So these two we have, um, one of them we did. We did one. Test four you will be doing. Answer keys are given to you. Okay, now out of the exercises that are given in the book, has anyone attempted any? If not, we'll just pick up a few of the questions and finish them off so that you have less to do for yourself. But ma'am, some of the starting questions that you made us do were from the textbook. Only. Yeah, some of them were from the textbook. Some of them were from outside. So you will be able to do the rest of them? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you have to take a time, uh, take out some time and do them. Because most of them we had completed um earlier so it would be a repetition for those who had not done has have already done them anyone who wants to do a few more questions hmm? 
everyone? No, I'm fine with anything. Okay. Who, who's gone missing? I think Sneha has gone missing. Rahul? Rahul is gone. Um, okay, these are, we'll do some of the two blank questions. Let's look at this one. Number 12. I hope everyone can, one can see the screen. Yes. Okay. So number 12 and 13, quickly give me the answers. I'm A. Hmm? A. 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 Everyone think it thinks it's A. Yes, ma'am. Hmm? Uh, hmm. Yes, it's right. Number 13 is? Uh, okay, can you repeat your answer for number 13? My I mother just said C. C. And what's your answer? I, I think it's C. Adesh, do you think it's C? Um, for 13 yes yeah it is c uh so okay you are correct so do you want me to discuss this or do you just want to solve them i think it is good to i solve have one them. question uh, yeah these exercises are from which chapter because uh, i can't find them in my book and this is one minute i think this Page number 155. Session nine. Uh, I think it is from session uh, 11. 11. Session 11. Uh, I hope you've got the correct PDF. Your sentence completion is which session in your um, in your material? Uh, I think 12 because all the exercises we did till now were from yeah. 12. So it is 11 between it's 11 and 12 are session uh, sentence completion. Okay. Right. Okay. This one is from, uh, I just opened the page randomly. Uh, this is from session 11. Session yeah. 11 exercise number. Exercise number four. Okay. Question number 14 and 15. Uh, option A. Hmm. Option A. Uh, something rolls. And ma'am, uh, 15 is D. 15 is D. D or B? D. Bombay. Bombay, okay. Okay. Adesh, what's your answer? B. Hmm? Number 14, A. A and 15, B. B. Yeah, it's correct. If you look at uh, number 14, instruction manual came with the computer that came with it is no masterpiece of dash pros because instructions are so something that we still do not know how to set up the computer. It means it is something which is not clear. Yeah. It is no masterpiece of clear prose. And it is so garbled that it's confusing. Okay, this is done. Let's see, there are so many questions before this. Okay, let's look at number three and four. Mom, is it D? Hmm? Is it D for the third one? D for the third one. 
could be let's see what about the other people do you think it's d um exacerbated hmm c let's see yes mm, okay who else is there pahi what's your answer Mom, which question? Question number three. Hmm? Option C. Option C, are you sure? Hmm? Agree, ma? Are you sure about your answer? Put it back no, into no. the sentence. Adesh, what's your answer? Um, C. C. It says the Senate warned the Prime Minister that if he did not accept the advice, the differences between the legislative and executive arms of the government would be what? It would increase. Yeah. Now, exemplify means to explain clearly. Exemplify is not increase yeah i'm sorry i confused the meaning yeah. so yeah when all the words are look like that it gets a, exasperated means exacerbated means to amplify or increase yeah okay number four was the answer i'm c i think it's c okay who said C? Adesh? No, Aditya, okay. But I have a question. Hmm? How will it be most journalistic writing could do with simplific simplification of paragraphs to make the prose more abstruse? Doesn't abstruse I, I, mean... I, I haven't said as yet whether C is correct or not. I want your answer. Okay. I think D. Hmm? D. Okay. Now, what's the meaning? Now, if we read the um, sentence, it says most journalistic writing could do with dash of paragraphs to make the prose more something. So um, it should be something to do with clear, right? So we need the paragraphs to be uh, maybe well written, hmm? which is expressed better. So uh, something that should be clear, it would not be legible. It would not be argumentative. It could not be incoherent. Yeah. Now we could go with succinct, which actually means well, it should clear. be none of the above because deltoid doesn't really fit in, I think. Mm, what does deltoid mean? It's, Have you looked up the meaning? Uh, according to science, I know uh, no. English, I'm not sure. Hmm. So, so in because, science it talks about uh, muscles and all but here yeah. it could be like well organized okay but i wasn't right? sure of the meaning i just guessed from succinct huh. so like succinct would be clear uh would go in would abstruse go in what does abstruse mean Difficult or complicated. Yeah. So the abstruse is the opposite of what we are looking for. Right? So if abstruse is the opposite of what we are looking for, that would not go in. We want something which is simplified and clear. Sussent is the only word that gives you that meaning and therefore deltoid would be correct. Okay? So a few difficult words. 
but uh, that difficult word should not be a problem because you have the meaning of the other words yeah okay then i think it's already 12 past 12 so um, all the other exercises that are there all the other questions in the book you will be doing plus on a one worksheet we have already solved you will still get the questions so that you can refer to them later on and i will share the other worksheet also okay